Hi guys, I'm Ivan from the Bovenkamer for all your 80s and 90s fun. And today we have a Macintosh classic with issues. Welcome to the Bovenkamer. So of course everybody knows this uh, Macintosh design from the 90s. This one is a classic introduced in 1990. It came with either a floppy drive or a floppy drive and a hard drive inside. I don't know if this one has a hard drive inside. We will see later on. So this one has issues. A friend of mine already did some work uh, on it like recapping stuff and so on. Uh, thanks for that Nick and thanks for sharing this machine with me. Uh, of course, you saw in the intro that it has issues when I power it on. The screen starts dancing like it's 1999, you know. It wiggles around a lot, it's not stable at all and it's not even makes sense. So, um, we expect a small icon asking for a disk, so that's not at all the case here. We have to open it up and see what's inside and maybe we can find the problem with it. So to open up this bitch, we need a special tool. It has to be long enough to reach for the screws, which are hidden all the way in there. Let's try. Two more screws here. Like so. So the screws are out and let's open it up. Here we go. So here it is. So now that we remove the case, let's have a look at the guts of this machine. First of all, we notice of course the CRT monitor. It's like an old television, but a small one, nine inch black and white. Then uh, right here vertically placed, we see this like pinkish uh, colored uh, PCB and that contains components to drive the CRT monitor and down there close to the power uh, power cable and uh, power button we have the power supply unit components transformators and stuff okay now here we see uh, a drive and that is a hard drive it says quantum and it's made in 1989 so it has a hard drive and we will disconnect it for now it is connected with this flat cable and we will remove it all right now this little board here we can all just take it out like so it's memory so here we see memory chips and here we see a connector so down there is another board of course the motherboard and between the motherboard and the hard disk we find the disk drive okay so we can disconnect the disk drive cable from the motherboard and from the disk drive there it is and there's one thing to notice, I'll tip it over so you can see it. Over here is a K2 
cable that comes from the power supply unit but also has pins for video in output. So also this one we can disconnect and then the motherboard motherboard just slides out of here and there it is. So earlier we noticed that when we power up this computer we do not hear the typical startup sound of uh, a Macintosh. So my first thought is that uh, the problem is on this motherboard somewhere because uh, the CRT shows some uh, scrambled stuff. Uh, we have power and uh, something is driving the CRT but the signal is scrambled and nothing useful is there but there is a signal so I think some, something is going on on this motherboard so we'll have to that's the first thing I will look into. So now that everything is taken apart, I did some research on the internet concerning that uh, checkerboard issue uh, that we see on the screen. And uh, often I come across uh, the same problem, uh, people saying that uh, it's about capacitors that are leaking. Uh, now on this motherboard, uh, the capacitors have been replaced already. So the capacitors are not a problem themselves, but I guess that the damage done by the previous, the old capacitors, is uh, still there. So um, in the next step we'll have to look for shorts or other kinds of damage on the motherboard. And in the meantime we will also check the power supply. So I got the thing powered up without motherboard and the drive connected and uh, we can check uh, this Molex for the voltages and we see here 1079 on one side and a 487 on the other side. That should be enough for the drive and now let's see what this cable is telling us. So. On this side we have the grounds I think and then let's poke around a bit this one is 1079 1192 that's something different I don't know exactly where the the 5 and the 12 volt pins are maybe I should check some documentation first but generally we do find some voltage voltages so at least the 12 and minus 12 and the 5. So now that we know that the PSU is uh, so I, I assume that it's working correctly let's have a look at this motherboard and search for uh, shorts on it. So I have uh, my multimeter set to measure shorts. If you hear that sound, it indicates a short. So let's listen to this. So that's a short and this one too. Okay, so that's all normal because these are all ground pins. If we continue, we shouldn't hear any beep, at least not continuously. So uh, this, this tells us that there are no shorts on the 5 and uh, 12 volt rails. So a short is probably not the issue with this board. So uh, there were no shorts on the motherboard but I turned it over to check some more of these surface mount capacitors. All these C numbers here. Okay. And uh, guess what? At C20, beep. Okay, that means there must be a short on this capacitor. This side of the capacitor is ground. When I connect this with ground pins, it beeps. So that's, I think that's normal. The other side is circuitry. So it's not good if this gives me a short, I guess. I'm not... Uh, 
the master of electronics far from that but i will try to remove this capacitor and see what happens so now we have removed this uh, c20 capacitor that gave us a short and we will try to hook up the motherboard and see what happens on the screen like so okay and let's have a look go so we still have the same uh, checkerboard pattern so that did not solve the problem so that did not solve the problem but uh, look at this if i do another test on the c20 even if it is removed it still gives me a short so there must be something else wrong here maybe i'm completely looking at the wrong place i'm not sure i, I told you i'm not an expert in these things but I don't understand why well, it still gives me a short, so probably there's somewhere else on the circuit uh, shorted out or something. I have to look further into it. Okay guys, so that's about how far my knowledge goes concerning this uh, uh, logic board. Uh, for me, maybe there's some bad RAM chips or another chip that's bad. I can't find any corrosion. I can't find any broken traces or anything else. So I'm not sure if I can, uh, with my knowledge, find something on this uh, logic board. So I will shift my focus now to the analog board because I've been told uh, on the analog board of course there is the power supply unit and I measured a voltage of 10.7 volts which is probably not enough to boot the computer so I will have a look at the analog board first so before we remove the analog board we have to take care of the CRT discharge it first and uh, always be careful Look at the signs on the, on the computer like these, they are high voltages, high capacity, uh, high voltage capacitors and stuff on there. So if you not, don't know what you're doing, then don't do it. Okay, so let's remove the analog board now. Alright, here it is, ladies and gentlemen, the analog board. So this is a closer look on the analog board and uh, in this part you see the power supply things. The speaker is also here and of course the cable going to the uh, logic board with the 5 and 12 volt and also the video input signals. The other part is for the CRT. Okay, so you see these stuff coming out. So I guess these capacitors are about to fail and I will have to replace them. I will do that off camera. It's maybe a bit embarrassing for myself to show that to you people, but I'll come back to you when I have replaced. So these are the capacitors that I have removed so far. Uh, they were in very bad shape. As you can see here, they left quite a mess on the analog board. And uh, man, the smell when you, when you desolder these things, it smells like boiling vomit or something. I have no other word for it. So on the other side you, all, you also see that uh, it was in bad shape. So I'll have to clean things up and resolder new and clean capacitors and maybe that will do the trick. So I replaced every electrolytic capacitor now except this large one. Uh, I had to order it uh, because it's uh, 400 volts, I didn't have it in stock. And I lost a few days because I ordered one uh, without looking at the dimensions of the new capacitor. 
and obviously this doesn't fit in here. So I ordered uh, one with good dimensions and it arrived today. So as a last step about the capacitors, I'm going to put this in, in the right way. This is the minus side. It is marked here as minus. So we put it in like this, like so. Turn over the board, be careful. And we're going to solder this. And then we are ready to assemble and test the computer again. Okay, so this one is soldered. Like so, it's the good I mentioned. And now we will reassemble the computer and see what happens. To avoid obvious problems, I reattach this protection card with one of these uh, things here so that I don't accidentally touch high voltage capacitors or other things that you don't want to feel. So everything is reconnected now. So fingers crossed, we're going to connect the power supply. And yeah, let's see what happens now. Here we go. Hmm. Beautiful. Checkerboard again. So that didn't help a lot. Hmm. So far, but not so good. So as you can see, the bitch is still not booting properly. So I think I'm gonna call it a day for this episode. I'm a bit disappointed uh, that I couldn't fix it uh, for now. I even don't know if the problem is on the analog board or the logic board. So if anyone can point me in the right direction, please let me know. I'll appreciate it very much. I hope there will be a sequel in which I can really fix this uh, Macintosh classic because it's a beauty and I really want it to work. So hope you enjoyed the video and see you next time in the Bovenkamer. <laughs>